Welcome to my lecture online. Here we are given two parametric equations, x equals t squared and y equals t cubed minus 3t, and we're trying to find dy dt. Oh, nope, we're trying to find dy dx. And we, we found in the previous video that dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. So to find dy dx, we must first take the derivative x with respect to t, then we're supposed to find the derivative of y with respect to t and divide one by the other. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with dy dt first. So dy dt is going to be the derivative of this, which is 3t squared minus 3. Then we find dx dt. And the derivative of x with respect to t is equal to 2t. So all we have to do is divide dy dt by dx dt to find dy dx. So dy dx is therefore equal to 3t squared minus 3 divided by 2t. Notice we can factor out a 3 over 2, so this can be written as 3 over 2 times t squared minus 1 over t, and this could also be written as 3 over 2 times t minus 1 over t. So here we have the derivative of y with respect to x. And notice, it's a function of t. So now we may ask ourselves the question, for which values of t is that derivative equal to 0? We're trying to find the slope dy dx equal to 0. So where is, where is dy dx equal to 0? So there's a couple of ways in which we can do that. We can first say to ourselves, well, since dy dx is equal to a fraction, the fraction, the dy dx will be equal to 0 when the numerator of the fraction is equal to 0. So in other words, we can find the point where the derivative is 0 when we simply find where dy dt is equal to 0. So we could say, set dy dt equal to 0 to find the 0 slope of dy dx. So when we do that, we do the following, dy dt is 3t squared minus 3, so 3t squared minus 3 equal to 0, which means that when we divide both sides by 3, t squared minus 1 equals 0, or t squared is equal to positive 1, so therefore t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1, which is equal to plus or minus 1. So for the values when t is equal to 1, and t is equal to negative 1, the slope will be equal to 0. We could have also done that by setting dy dx equal to 0. After all, that's the derivative of y with respect to x, so we're going to set dy dx equal to 0, and hopefully we'll get the same values for t where the slope is equal to 0. So set dy dx equal to 0, so here we have 3 over 2 times t minus 1 over t is equal to 0. So first of all, we divide both sides by 3 over 2, so we end up with t minus 1 over t is equal to 0, or t is equal to 1 over t. Multiplying both sides by t, we end up with t squared is equal to 1, or t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1, which is equal to uh, plus or minus 1. So notice that we get the exact same values for t that indicate where that function will have a zero slope. Now we may want to know what the points are on the function where the slope is equal to zero. So if we want to find the two points, we know where x is going to be, what x is going to be equal to, and what y is going to be equal to when we plug in the various values for t. Now I'm kind of running out of board space here, so let me try to squeeze it in over here. So x when t is equal to one is equal to one squared, which is 1, and x when t is equal to negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared, which is equal to 1. So in other words, when x equals 1, that's where we have a zero slope. But we probably have two points because we have t equals plus 1 and t equals negative 1, so let's do the same for the value for y. So y when t is equal to 1 is equal to, where we have 1 cubed, minus 3 times 1. So 1 cubed is 1, minus 3 times 1 is equal to negative 2, 
and y when t is equal to negative 1 is equal to negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1. So that would be positive 3 minus 1, that would be a positive 2. So notice we have two values for y and one value for x, which means there's two places where the function has a zero slope. So the zero slope will be found at the following two points, when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2, a positive 2, and when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to negative 2. So those are the two places where the slope of the function is 0 using those two parametric equations. And that's how it's done.